Well, uh, I understand the mood is being lifted here by the melodic sounds of the parliament required. I wonder if you can hear them in my background. But of course, uh, parliament has rolled out the red carpet for the president today because this is the most important day on their calendar. But they did tell us, Ayanda, that this year they are spending 2.1 million, which is 500,000 million, 500,000 rands less than the, what they spent last year. But of course, this year's State of the Nation address comes against the backdrop of the 30-year anniversary of the release of uh, our found, the founding father of our democracy, Nelson Mandela. And speaking of the backdrop, as you can see behind me, um, Parliament was never going to miss an opportunity to, um, to, to, uh, to celebrate that iconic day. As you can see, there's that famous shot on this, in the balcony of the Cape Town City Hall, where uh, former now president, the late Nelson Mandela, addressed us on the 11th of February. We saw the president also um, reenacting that scene two days ago, addressing the nation. But today is about Parliament, and right now I'm joined by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Me Tandi Modise. Ma, I know that today that uh, it, the, one of the most important things today is you, you said you are not worried about uh, disruptions today, but I think the one thing that is overshadowing today's event is the issue of security. How can you not be worried um, when you know that the violence that we saw a few years ago did put a, was a blot on the image of Parliament? I'm not worried because Parliament operates within the law. We've got rules that are adopted by all members of Parliament. These rules, every new member is inducted in. And therefore, for me to get grey hairs about uh, rules that I know we have been taking people in since the last elections to understand, would really waste our time. We will go in, we have heard about the threats to disrupt, we will apply the rules very evenly. We should not actually think that um, the rights of South Africans to get the message from their president is something that we, we, we will not guarantee. We will guarantee that the president gets that space to speak. But how do we avert the violence? Who said we want to plan to any violence? We've seen it before, Mr. Speaker, where the EFF disrupted and then um, the parliamentary services walked in and, and uh, pushed them out. We avert the violence because we have rules that avert violence. We keep to the rules. We respect the rules we have all agreed to. And yesterday, Speaker, in the preparations, we saw the parliamentary Twitter account telling us that the former president, Jacob Zuma, will be here. You did say that there will be an investigation as to how that happened because uh, we had his lawyers saying that this is not the case. It's still overseas. What is the update on that? One? We have, as I stand here, not had any confirmation from former president Zuma, and therefore that is the status. I mean, what is the update on your own investigation internally? I'm not doing the investigation. I did say that the manager responsible will give us a report. He must do the investigation. Of course, this is a very important um, year for our parliament. We've got a number of issues on the table, one of them being the, um, the amendment of Section 25 of the Constitution. What else would you say in terms of this parliamentary year is there, uh, are the main issues? That land is the main focus. National health insurance is the second. For us as parliament, it is the relationship between members and the communities that is also important. It is our relationship with the executive that is important. It is the relationship between us and the judiciary that is important. And I'm saying this very deliberately because um, we need to begin to take the role of the public representative seriously. We need to begin to understand that the public representative has responsibilities. But that in exercising my responsibility, I must respect the next member of parliament's responsibility too. And therefore, th that is important for us as we go about increasing capacity of parliament on oversight. We have sent strong messages to provinces to desist from trying to stop members of parliament when they do their oversight. We will be on the rampage doing oversight in 2020 and the years So basically beyond. it is the year of action. It is the year of action for the MP. It is the year, the year where we will make our voices heard on behalf of our people. We do this not on behalf of anything else but the people who have brought us to Parliament. 
Speaker, you have cut back on a number of costs. I understand you won't have the junior guard and the civil guard, but I hear that you are keeping the imbongi. We know in the year before that we there was a... To, <laughs> to do away with imbongi, I can tell you I did not sleep for 48 hours. South Africa was on top of me. And why was that? And it is because one of the things we fought for in this country was the acceptance that we're all equal human beings in South Africa. And therefore, bringing in an Imbongi is to also say our cultures, our identities are still in place. We rotate the languages de deliberately because we say we are all equal and we also give each other a chance to show off but also to unite South Africa. Thank you very much, Speaker. Um, there you have it, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Mayor Tandimodi, uh, telling us that as far as they are concerned, there are rules of Parliament that govern how Parliament operates and that uh, even if there are disruptions, the rules will be implemented. But she's not quite answering the question as to whether there will be any violence if members of the EFF um, refuse to leave the National Assembly. But also on a lighter note, but also an important one, she also touched on the cost-cutting, but of course they were not going to leave out the Imbongi, who will be singing the president's praises when he comes on later on. And now it's back to the studio with you, Ayanda. Thank you very much, Sibu. And of course, we understand that there's an unprecedented move in so far as the Imbongi is concerned. There's a 19-year-old who will be taking up that role today. And I think, yeah, you did mention that this is certainly the reprieve from the more hard-hitting political implications that are surrounding uh, some of the developments around the State of the Nation Address. But we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much. Sibu Ngalwa is Newsroom Africa's politics editor, live for us from just outside the parliamentary precinct.